Okay, let's start. As I have argued many times before today, Mars colonization started much earlier than we think. Like any other colonization of the past, it began in the human imagination. Nevertheless, this colonization is happening now in the real world. And differently from the past, it has a worldwide mass media coverage. We are now having several missions involving Mars and several countries in the world, Europe included, are actively participating in this space race. While literature and cinema have prepared the generations of readers and spectators for any kind of extraterrestrial invasion, the hard sciences have gradually built up the technology necessary to explore the outer space and to take the first steps on alien lands and are now joining forces with the soft sciences in order to design human missions with the double aim of giving the earth a new possibility while making big money. I never get tired of saying that the risk of repeating the same errors of the past does exist. Our planet is being destroyed by environmental crisis, overpopulation and natural catastrophes enhanced by human intervention, pandemics included. So it is quite natural that we look outside the window, so to say, and look for other places to go. Unfortunately, nobody can really guarantee that the investors of today and settlers of tomorrow will show more respect to the environment than we have granted our own home planet so far. In this scenario, new economies are emerging, which ought to take ethical and ecological issues into consideration in order to avoid inequalities and reproducing the failures of the Anthropocene. That is why I believe in the necessity of an interdisciplinary approach and a common agenda that implies equality, sustainability and respect for the environment and biodiversity of Mars with a little help from humanities. First of all, we should think twice about the lexicon we use. The words we encounter more often as regards Mars are terraforming and colonization. The former is a Latin term I'm sorry, doesn't work. Okay, sorry. Okay, the former is a Latin term from terra and forma that was first used in science fiction. It means to render another planet as similar to Earth as possible. The second term, colonization, also comes from Latin, precisely from colere, which means to cultivate the land. A colonist is therefore, literally speaking, a farmer. This is, is interesting because these two terms are strictly linked to a third one, which is transplantation. This term comes from transplant, a botanic action, and was used by American farmer John Actorson de Kerr in 1782 as a powerful metaphor in order to explain the nature of the new race of Americans, the tease Europeans who had brought their national genius with them and transplanted it into the rich and gorgeous American soil. Both terms, colonization and transplantation perfectly represent the pioneering spirit which informs the current projects of space exploration. As Colonel Stephen Ganyard said on May 30, 2020, the SpaceX Falcon 9 launch of that day underlines the importance to the US to be back in space and in a broader context, what it means for the humankind to be able to go out and truly colonize. The age of space colonization 
actually started with Kennedy's New Frontier speech on July 15, 1960. It had a first climax with the moon landing on July 20, 1969, and is now on the verge of a new phase, which is going to see manned crews getting onto planet Mars. According to the Mars TV docudrama series, this will happen as soon as 2033. Actually, since the end of 2019, newspapers and websites have kept announcing a rush to Mars in 2020. The conditions seemed perfect because of the position of the two planets, Mars making a close approach to Earth in October. As it turned out, the global pandemic and following economic crisis have been delaying space activities. Nonetheless, it is important to keep an eye on the ongoing debate. The first thing to note is that whereas in the 1960s, the outer space motivation was mainly political, linked as it was to the Cold War between the USA and the USSR, nowadays we are witnessing a growing importance of the economic side of space programs. This will undoubtedly open new markets, jobs and opportunities worldwide. Second, it may get around the problem posed by the current legislation, which says that nations, that is governments, cannot proclaim ownership of other planets. As we know, in our age, private companies are taking the place of states. Nonetheless, there are some drawbacks to the project of terraforming, irrespective of its being a public or private matter. First, it is obvious that not all mankind will be able to gain benefits from terraforming, and this is quite unethical. Second, I wonder if ecology will be respected. As a matter of fact, the Martian environment might be radically altered, with consequences we cannot know yet. And third, human beings ought to be sure that their cultural heritage is included in the project. To quote the Mars TV series again, we find scientists, doctors, engineers, uh, psychologists, botanists, but no philosophers, artists, writers, and scholars. We can admire a huge and pleasant lounge bar, but no books, not even in electronic format, nor are movies, paintings, and photo exhibitions ever shown or recollected. Nobody seems to remember politics, religion, history. From time to time, the colonists have recollections of green gardens and blue skies, but they never remember a library, a theater, or a music concert. For these reasons, I think we should have the full attention and engagement of scholars of all disciplines, humanities included, and be sure to avoid the same errors we made on this planet. If greed prevails, if injustice prevails, will just plunge back into the same old story. What I personally mean by sustainability is clearly expressed in a collective article I wrote together with a professor of ecology and a philosopher. In the article, we underlined the, the absolute necessity of adopting a truly sustainable and multidisciplinary vision. which involves a deeply ethical, ecological, and cultural approach. Since I study literature, I want to focus the last part of my talk on some important suggestions that come from fictional works of the past. Several novels and science fiction movies have shown us in the course of time cruel aliens and nasty Martians whose only aim was to destroy the human race ranging from the War of the Worlds to Mars Attacks and beyond. However, parallel to this production, there were a number of texts which predicted the Earth's self-destruction and built a totally different narrative of the present and the future. Just to name a couple of them, in 1893, two women from Iowa Alice Ilgenfried Jones and Ella Merchant 
published Unveiling a Parallel. In this novel, a young American man travels to Mars where he discovers a society based on gender equality. In William Simpson's The Man from Mars, 1901, it is a Martian who visits a terrestrial, just to tell him that Mars is much more advanced than Earth and that our planet will be destroyed if we do not change our ethical and ecological attitudes. And we should not forget the astronomer Percival Lowell, author of three books of Mars, who wrote in 1908, already man has begun to leave his mark on this, his globe, in deforestation, in canalization, in communication. Maybe Lowell was a little naive as an astronomer, since he believed by mistranslating Virgilio Schiaparelli that the Martians were advanced enough to build canals on a planetary scale in order to irrigate their increasingly arid planet. Nonetheless, Oliver Morton acknowledges his deep intuition, since as he writes, in his refusal to distinguish astronomical observation from sociological explanation, he prefigured the hybridization of the human world and the Earth system that characterizes the Anthropocene. This word Anthropocene is crucial to our understanding of the future that is awaiting us. Much depends on our decision whether to export such approach to other planets and asteroids or to choose a different approach to the environment. In the former case, we shall witness a new interplanetary transplantation following Kravkur's model. In the latter, we must act quickly, never forgetting to export social equality, ecology, and humanities together with technology and profit. Thank you very much. A little bibliography, if I can manage, yes, that's it. And please contact me if you feel like doing that. Thank you.